Good morning, my olive. Good morning, my olive. And good morning, my olive. Boy, it's a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord one more time. Huh? So y'all go ahead and get the Lord a hand cap of praise, please. We're not many in numbers this morning, but we are here strong because we all love the Lord. We're not going to prolong any time. We are going to get ourselves started. I want to say welcome to everyone in Facebook land and conference call if there be any. And if pastor's absent, I'm just going to try to uh, guide this ship a little while today and prayerfully we'll get it where it needs to be. Amen? Now this time we ask Minister Washington to come and give us our opening prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Good and eternal God. God, we come to you this morning not asking for anything, God. But God, we come in total adoration unto you, O oh God. O oh God, we come with our hands lifted high, O oh God. Lord, we come with our hearts open wide, O oh God. God, we come to receive your word, oh God, on this day, Father God. Oh God, a day that we've never seen before, oh God. Lord God, we love you on today, oh God. Lord, we just want to magnify you, oh God. We just want to praise your holy name on today, oh God. Lord, we realize, Father God, that everybody is going through some things right now, oh God. But, Lord God, we must trust and believe in you, O oh God. We must lift our hands and give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise, O oh God. Because we know that you are still worthy to be praised, O oh God. Father God, we thank you for sitting high and looking low, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for early rising this morning, O oh God. Clothed in a portion of our right mind, oh God. Lord God, we thank you for that, Father God. Lord God, we ask you to bless each and every household that's sitting up under the sound of my voice, Father God. Bless the ones, dear God, that could not attend on today, God. But Lord God, wherever they at around the world, in their home, the hospitals, wherever they may be at, oh God. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, like only you can, oh God. Lord God, we thank you for today, Lord God. We bless your holy name. We give you glory in the past the absent, Father God. Lord God, we thank you that you continue to bless this household, Father God. Cover them in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord God, we thank you, we bless you, and we praise your holy name. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. And the church said, Amen. Oh, 
you've been so good. When I look back over my life, you've been so good. So good to me. But listen, every time I turn around, even when I didn't have a dime, every time I Look around, y'all. Troubles all around me. Lord, you've been so good. Shown up good to me, y'all. So good. I don't know about you, but it's been so good. So good to me. Yes, yeah. So good to me. Listen. What you did when you died for my sin may not mean much to some, but you did it for everyone. Lord, you've been so good, shown up good, so good when you woke me. Kept your loving arms all around me, Jesus. So good. You made them behave. So good. I had food on my table. So good. I even had a roof over my head. So good. When I look back over my family, so good. I saw all my family doing well. Nobody but you, Jesus. So keep your loving arms all around us. So good, God Almighty. So good when you died on Calvary. So good when you set my soul free. So good I know it nobody but you, Jesus. So visitors and friends it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time the way is done here the gospel will be preached the sick will be prayed for the invitation will be extended these are our weekly announcements usher news second Sunday ushers will also be on duty for fifth Sunday that's next week Thank you. Thank you for practicing social distancing. Please keep your distance. Your safety is our number one priority. Always remember there are three ways to give. You can give online with the Givelify app. You can mail in to our P.O. box, or you can drop it off here at the church on Sundays. Amen. 
Blessings on your birthday and anniversary for the month of August. Two of our youth are celebrating a birthday this month. We have Jayla, she is 16 years old. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jayla. Another one of our youth, he's 15. Happy birthday, James. Please remember, all birthday submissions, we're asking that you submit them by the weekly deadline, which is on Saturday. Thanks. Please remember to keep our sick and shut-ins and members requested intercessory prayer lifted. And this concludes our morning announcements. Solicit your prayers for our pastor emeritus, Reverend Samuel. He's in the hospital right now. Uh, or as I know, he's getting a little better. And that's the last word I got. So we ask that you continue, not only him, but there's a lot of sickness going on. You know, it may not be in your home this week, but it could be. My daughter called me last almost two weeks ago and said her whole family had the COVID. So, but she called me, what was it, uh, yesterday and said everybody was doing fine. A bunch of them tested negative. So, I, I'm just glad they did what they were supposed to do by not coming around the rest of the family. Because, uh, you know, it, it could have been an ugly thing. So, if you know you're not feeling well, stay at home. It's better to be safe than sorry because you never know what somebody else may have already and they can't handle that COVID. So if you got some sweating going on, just go ahead and stay at home unless you was outside cutting grass. Amen. Uh, we're going to continue to uh, keep our pastor and his wife lifted up in prayer as they uh, was planning on vacation this week anyway, but uh, her aunt passed away and funeral is next Saturday, but he said he'd be back next Sunday, more than likely, so y'all just keep them in prayer as they travel and check on their family down the road, amen? amen. Like I said, with this this thing is going around, we don't, we don't know. It ain't gotta, it don't have to be COVID. Y'all act like y'all on here. See, it, it, COVID ain't the only thing that's taking folks away from here. I think they're blaming some extra stuff on COVID just to get it over with. But y'all just sung a song that God has been what? So good. I saw about five or six people stood up when he sung that song. It, it seemed like to me the whole church should have been up some kind of way or another. Because I know he's been good to us. You can just look around and see how good he's been to us. You know, we realize that we can look at our closet and just pick out what we want to wear. That's a sign that God's been good to you. You look out in the yard and say, well, I'm going to drive this today. Well, I may drive that tomorrow. See, that's a sign that God's been good to you. And you got folks that can't even come out the house. But we want to sit out on God. Lord, have mercy. I, I'm not going to do it. Give us another selection there, choir. Y'all, come on, let's get something out. So you don't put nothing in, you can't get nothing out. But I know he's been so good. Huh? I know he's been so good. Because, see, I, I'm just talking about me. See, I know where he brought me from. Because I had some of my own family members tell me, no, nah, that boy ain't going to do nothing. That boy ain't going to do nothing. Look at, look at the way he acted. Every time he turned around, he ends up. He ain't going to do right. But look at God. See, sometimes we got to let us go and let God do his. And the problem right now is we're not letting God do his part. God got something for you. 
The songwriter said God got a blessing just waiting on you. If you do all the things that you're supposed to do, huh? be honest, kind-hearted.
I'm thanking for the little car he gave me. Yeah. I may not live in a mansion on a hill. Yes, sir. But I'm thanking for the little house he blessed me with. Yes, sir. My closet may not be running over with clothes. Yes, sir. But I'm thanking for the little garment he let me put on. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Y'all come on back and help me a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Can you help me say this? Jesus. You've been good. 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 control the sun coming up, and we can't control the sun coming down. So what can we do in the day of the Lord? When the Lord comes back, we can't control that either. So we must love him with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. Now, if you are a true believer in Jesus Christ, that he came in the flesh, and you love Jesus Christ with all your heart, could you please stand up and give him a round of applause? You know, while us being Americans, we'll become true believers in the American dream. You know, to be successful, you got to have a car, a home, money, based on the media, TV, internet, music videos. But just think for the last 30, 30 years, think of what kind of music that we are listening to on the media. Tupac, Nicki Minaj, uh, Carla B, Beyonce. And that stuff is instilling in the next generation's hearts and minds. 
So this allows us to be totally absorbed in getting what we can get instead of giving what we can give. Okay. We look at our careers and our jobs, and that's our worth. And we become self-serving, intellectual, spiritually lazy, boasters of what we have, totally absorbed in ourselves. Some people don't even feel right if they don't have their cup of coffee in the morning. How about having a cup of Jesus in the morning? I mean, you have to look for Jesus because he woke you up. It wasn't that alarm clock. He woke you up. He made the day. The, chirp, the chirping of the birds when you're here in the morning, that's going to happen because God's designed plan. And then when we look at pampering ourselves, we are actually worshiping ourselves. We can't deny the billions of our youth all over the world flocking to videos, films, music, internet, smartphones, glamorizing ourselves, and in turn, they glamorize their sales. Sexually explicit behavior, vulgar language, behavior of violence, dishonesty, greed is marinating in the whole earth. Who is behind this influence? Lucifer. You know, Lucifer, before he fell, he was the top worshiper in heaven. So it's more than just worshiping. It's giving your total heart to God. The name of my sermon is, If My People. Could we pray, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we look to the, the hills for our blessings, oh Father. Yahweh, we know that you are the creator, Elohim, that created all things. Without you, we are nothing. You took nothing and made something. Thank you, oh Father. Forgive us for the things that we are doing down here, Father, that's not pleasing to your sight. We are just dust, oh Father. We want you to do, look at us and give us a heart that we can be pleasing in your sight. We know that we have wandered to the left and we have wandered to the right. But we want to stay focused on your son, Jesus Christ. We love you, Father. But if, if we love you, why don't we obey you? We need to obey you, Father. So give us the gill and the strength and the stress that we can have in our hearts and mind and our soul to obey your word. To do your will. And may peace come to us this overriding understanding that we don't understand what you're doing but we understand that we need to please you in your son Jesus Christ's name we pray amen it's church let's read 2 Chronicles 7 13 through 14 I say again 2 Chronicles 7 7 13 and 14 but before we read that I like to uh, give thanks to God, my wife, family, the pastor of Mile Olive, Reverend McCauley and his family, the deacons, the trustees, the musicians, my Mount Olive family and guests. And we all are children of God. If my people, you are my people and I am your people. Okay, when you have the uh, scriptures, please stand or say amen. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I spend sin, pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Amen. Amen. Ushers, you may be seated. The context of this scripture is when the temple was dedicated to God which in Solomon's era. That was then. But now, we're looking at what's happening right now in 2021. And then you look at, when you go back into the scriptures, and he says, I will send pestilence among my people. That's COVID-19. If my people are called by my name, 
How many times have you said Jesus and you just said it in vain? Call his name and mean it. Do you call out his name Jesus? Jeho Jehovah Rapha, the healer. Okay, can he heal what's going on with us right now? All things are possible through Christ Jesus. But you have to be a believer and you have to give your heart, soul, mind, spirit to God. You can't say that I'm a father of Christ and have wicked ways. There is no mean-spirited Christians. So we, we, we as Americans, we, uh, we think we have special privilege. We have people that come from all over the world that want to come to America because they want their American dream. What Gandhi once said is, I would want to be a Christian. He was Hindu. But I never seen a Christian really practicing their faith. Think about it. Are you really practicing your faith? Or do we stand on his word no matter what? Do you call out his name? Do you see someone that's needed and hungry? Do you help them? Or do you help somebody in your, your family? You don't even have to go outside. This is a rhetorical question that we need to ask ourselves. Um, God is not pleased with humans in earth. He has shed up heaven because of the results of sin manifested by the people in pursuing their plans of evil zeal. Why would you do that? If we look at our leaders, and the leaders are a reflection of the, of the land, we have leaders that are doing things that's contrary to the health of our children, our elderly, the, the, the sick, the homeless, the poor. All they want is money, and be politically strong. We as a people, God's people, must call out his name and pray. Confess. Confess what? That we God's people? Confess our sins. We in the flesh, we sin every day. Every day we sin. Why? Because we are flesh. That's why we have to call out Jesus' name, because he came here for us. In Isaiah 47, 8 through 9, it says, Therefore, hear this, thou art, and give this to pleasure. We love pleasure. That thou dwellest carelessly and says in thy heart, I am. So we want to be like God. And none else beside me. I shall sit as a widow. How many times are our children being killed? And our husbands being killed for senseless things. My people, if they call my name. You can't even go anywhere in the United States. The killing weight in Columbus, Georgia, percentage-wise, is higher than they killed in Atlanta, Georgia. We're killing each other. But we are God's people. Now, as I said, neither one of us should know the loss of our children. Are they lost? Look at our children, generation uh, X and Y. Just think about it. What are we doing for them to show them that we are children of God? Are we setting an example for them? Verse 9. There are two things that shall come in a, in a moment. The loss of the children and widowhood. I'm reading from the scripture. They shall come before thee in their perfection for the multiples there of thy sorcery. What I mean by sorcery? What's the Bible mean by that? It's talking about pharmaceutical. It's talking about rebellion. Okay, this is the use of drugs, violence. This was written before Jesus Christ. But is it happening right now? We have abundance of things, but we put those abundance of things before we put God. Let's go to Revelations 18, verse 5 and 8, please. For her sins have reached into heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Therefore shall her plague come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judge her. He's judging the earth right now. If you look to your left and look to your right, and you look at your sisters and your brothers and to your back and to your front, somebody has been affected by the pandemic. 
one way or another. So he's talking to us. Are we listening? I, I wonder. I wonder, should I want my Mighty Suits and my, my Jordash pants or, or my, my expensive shoes? Would that get me to heaven? So why am I putting so much effort to put in press of an image? Because we're made in the image of God. We all are made in the image of God. And no matter what we have done, if we take it to him and we truly confess of our sins, he will forgive. So apparently not too many people professing their sins to Jesus Christ. And repent. Let's not repent. Turn from my evil ways. Now, I don't mean we turn like this. Because we're right back where we was. That means that you got to step back. Everybody know their individual sins that they have done. I'm not here to judge. Now, what did Jesus Christ have to say about this? Let's go to Luke 8, 11 through 14. If my people. Now, this parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside, they hear. Then cometh the devil. And take away the word out of their hearts. Least they should believe and be saved. 13. They are on a rock, are they? Which when they hear, receive the word with joy. They praising. They, ju uh, they jumping up and down. They're doing all that. But they don't have the rule of God in them. Which for a while believe. And in time of temptation, fall away. When it. Sexual immorality comes, they fall to it. When that drug, their favorite drug come to them, they fall to it. When that drink that they know that they shouldn't drink, and I'm not saying drinking is a sin, because God, uh, Jesus' first miracle was made in wine from water, but they get overindulgence in it. God's name is jealous. He's a jealous God. You cannot have no other gods before him. If you say you are blessed, you are blessed. But who are you blessed from? Fourteen. And when they fall among the thorns, and they which when they give her go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit of perfection. What do they mean by fruit? The fruits of the spirit. Are you performing the fruits of the spirit in your life? Now, I'm not talking about within these four walls right here in the church or the four walls in your house. When you walk down the street, when you go to work, when you go to your careers, when you travel, is that anointing of God on you where somebody will know that you're a child of God? Or do you shy away so you can blend in with the world? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Mm. You know, in Amos 7 and 10, it says, withholding rain. Let's think about it. It's weather that's been happening in places that never happened before. It's raining in Greenland. It never rained in Greenland it ever. It's raining in Greenland. Hurricanes is hitting in the northern part of our country. Never happened. Jesus is trying to get us to come back to him because God is telling us time is running short. We have to get serious and get ready, okay? And we got to get ready. Now, this is the dressing room down here, but what are you wearing? <laughs> He's causing it to rain with places, like you said, never rain. And then up on the, another city, it ain't raining. That's the latter-day rain. You've been in Revelations. I'm in Revelations right now, okay? And, and you would say, he said he was sent a pestilence. Now, I got a story to tell you. It's raining. Hurricane is coming. 
and you're sitting in your living room and you're praying to God to save you. They done blocked off the area all around you where you can't get out. Someone knocks at your door. Fire truck and ambulance come and tell you, hey, we got route out, a uh, way out to go somewhere to get you saved and be rescued from the hurricane. You say, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. So the bus go on and they leave. Ambulance leave. Hurricane comes. Flood. You're on your second floor. A boat come. Boat knock on your window. Say, this is the last raft or boat that's going to take you to be saved from this hurricane. And you say, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. And they go on. Now you're sitting on your roof. The water's got so high. Helicopter come. Drop a ladder down. Pull the hoist down for you. And say, get on board. We'll take you to safety. And you say, no, I'm waiting on the Lord. Then you die in your sins, that flood, the hurricane. And when you get to talk to God, you say, well, God, I was waiting on you. He said, I sent an ambulance, I sent a boat, and I sent a helicopter. And you wouldn't listen to what I tell you. Now, just look at the pandemic. He gave his mask. He gave his social distancing. Then he gave us a test. Then he gave us a vaccine. He's giving us the antidote to what's happening to us. <laughs> Alabama's 35% people has got vaccinated. 35%. Now, let's, 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 let's look at the statistics and kick the ballistics. 90, no, 40 to 70% of the people affected are minorities, my people. Elderly, my people, and people of color. When we're going to wake up, if my people. If you haven't got vaccinated now, why haven't you got vaccinated? And you might say, well, okay, I don't know what they got in the vaccination. And then I look at you, some of y'all, and you got a tattoo. You don't even know what's in that ink what they put into you. Help us, please. Let's think about it. Now, you will take that what you have. Well, I, 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 I'm talking to the young generation. They think they're invisible because everybody thinks they're invisible when they're young. But see, they'll take that and they, they won't hang around the elderly because, they, 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 okay, I'm not going to get the elderly sick. Okay? But see, now they got their variants. And that variance is going to our schools. And we got leaders that says no mass in schools. They're making it a political standard. Political. Think about it. It's not about monetary. It's not political. It's not economic. It's spiritual. Can you see the virus? But can we see our faith? Corinthians 13, 11 to 13. I mean, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 11 to 13. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. When I became a man, when we say human, man or woman, okay, I put away childish things. For now, we see through glass darkly, but then face to face, if you're talking to God every day, he's going to give you direction. When you get that cup of coffee, pray to God. When you brush your teeth, pray to God. When you comb your hair, pray to God. When you look in that mirror, the image of God, can you see that image of God when you're looking in that mirror? Talk to him. He'll talk to you. Ask him to give you the wisdom. He'll give it to you. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as I am known. So by how you live is how you are known. You might fool 
Carl, Harry, Martha, Joe, but you can't fool God. He know your heart. He looks at your heart. And now, abide, faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these three are charity, which is love. Now, just think about the love of God, agape. Love is wider than the universe. His love is wider than the universe. Can you imagine that? Taller than the Milky Way. What else can I say? We can't even imagine how his love is for us. And all he wants us to do is love one another. So if you love your neighbor, get a vaccination. Because you don't want to spread something to them or you don't want to receive something of the devil. Because the devil brings pestilence. I mean, God brings the pestilence, but the devil is a test. He's testing us. Are we going to be faithful to the end? Are you faithful to the end or are you just there when times are good? Let's go to Galatians 5, 19 and 21. Hey, Murphy, you hearing me over there? Now, the works of the flesh are manifested with these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lavification, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, barrens, immolation, wrath, stripes, sedition, heresies. Verses 21. If you're doing any of this stuff right now, you're not in the will of God. Envies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, partying like it ain't no, no tomorrow, and, and like such, of which I tell you, as I have also told you in the time past, which they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, it's tight, but I'm trying to be right here. Has the church forgotten the Lord thy God? How many people sitting right here is doing these things right here that I just named? Mm. Rhetorical question. Only you and God needs to answer that. Because I'm not a judge and nobody's in here is your judge. We must walk as children of God in the light, in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Now I'm going to give you the steps on how to do that. Step number one. We must pray and request intersection for this nation. Step number one, we must pray and request intercession for this nation. So just don't pray to God for what you want. Pray to, to his face. Make a smile on his face. Pray for somebody else. Pray for things that you don't see with your naked eye, but you see with your spiritual eye. Ready, step. Step number two. Confess and repent of our sins. Repentance is the only means of repairing our relationship with God and it is the way of changing our thinking. Now, I gave you a demonstration of walking away from your sins, but you have to think it in your mind. Because, see, the devil's going to shoot them things back at you because he knows what you're weak at. He's been doing it for you for years. So you're going to have to put filter what you have, your mind, on Jesus. Have your mind on Jesus and Jesus on your mind. You know, a lot of people want to put their money on their mind, but if you put Jesus on your mind, the money comes automatically. Put Jesus on your mind. When you get ready to cuss that person out, say, Jesus, please help me. When you want to laugh at somebody because they're down or they've done you wrong in the past, Jesus, please forgive me. So when you put Jesus on your mind, you can't go wrong. If you believe. This thinking process is godly behavior and it's true repentance. There is a change in your behavior. Ready, step. Step number three, tarry. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. He will lead you in all truth. This leads to knowledge and all discernment. Church, let me hear a praise if you really love Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Reach out with your hands and praise him. Because back in the day, when we were back in the day in, 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 in Africa, or when we were slaves, we didn't have music. We didn't have drums. We had to make the, the music in our hearts and in our soul. And, you know, we get that stump, you know. No. Now, if drummer, now, give me something I can dance to. Get that beat. Yeah, you got vision. Come on now. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line. line. Come on, audience. Tell him what you want. Now, give me some of them 88s. Walking with Jesus right now. Now, boy, if you're walking with Jesus, this leads to knowledge and discernment. Step number four stop, look, and listen. Stop rebelling against the word of God. Look into your heart and acknowledge in everything what you do. Listen. To Jesus when he's calling you through the scriptures. When that small still voice are talking to you when you're out there in the world. He's calling us throughout the scripture. And what comes to mind is Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all my heart. Lean not on my own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be healed to thy neighbor and marrow to my bones. And I'm giving you the word right now. You can just say the word of God and it will not come back to him void. So when you say his word to him, when you're going through something, he will save you. He will put a hedge of protection around you. Why? Because he took it to the cross and he gave it to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ died for our sins. He put his left hand up and his right hand up, and his feet on the stirrup, and he died for us. And he died, and he fell to that ground and put it in, into the ground as being buried. But on that third day, that third day, he rose. He rose with all power. All power. And what, what did he do with that power? Mm. He's going to return. You're going to be ready when he returns. Jesus is going to return. Go to Revelation 6, 7 through 8. And when he had opened up the fourth seal, we're in the fourth seal right now, people. I heard a voice of the fourth beast saying, come and see. Now, y'all can see yourself. Look in your spiritual eyes. And I looked and beside a pale horse and his name that said it on him was death. COVID-19, and he and held father with him, and a power was given to him over the fourth part of the earth. The fourth part of this earth going to die to kill and with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of this earth. Christians, people of God, my people, 
he's telling us in the Bible. I'll be reading the Bible and understanding. It's here right now. It's here right now. So when he returned, now wait, I'm, I'm going to get happy right now. When he returned, think about it. There's going to be no more diabetes. No more cancer. No more death. No more sorrow. No more tears. And all you have to do now is believe and obey. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. If you stand on your feet right now, please. The doors of the church are open. If you can't come up here because of COVID-19, come up here in your spirit, your mind, and your soul and give your sins right here to this altar. Amen. Growing up as a child In my it's a good mama's day. care Lovely day She always told me At this time, pray for each other Jesus will always be there God in heaven, the praises and the prayers of his people Now I'm a grown man Living on my own I can truly Yeah. 
Acknowledge our, our guests in the back. Could you please stand and tell us something about yourself? Well, uh, don't look no further. <laughs> Brother, it's right here. Next time we do, don't look no further. Um, at this time, we, we all stand for the benediction. Hey, yo, hey, yo. <laughs> don't look no further, further. <laughs> Contest on you. May the Lord give you his peace. Will you go in peace and spread the word of God with your mouth, your life, and your soul? In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm.